Father, we gather together this morning. We just thank you for this day. And Father, I pray for each and every one here. And Lord, I pray that you will and we will be open to your leadership. And Father, know you will lead us. But Father, I pray uh, for each and every one here. And if there's someone here that doesn't know you, doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that, Father, they'll come to know you today. That, Father, at least a seed will be planted, and that, Father, it will be nourished and it will spring out. Thank you again. Take charge of this service. Lead us, guide us, direct us. In my son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Again, we do welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are here with us this morning. It's good to be in God's house of worship and to praise His holy name. In the way of announcements on the bottom of the page of the morning worship, you'll notice a few announcements uh, that we that we uh, that will be taking place uh, today after the morning worship. Say five or ten minutes afterwards. For those who would like to stay, we'll have a business meeting. After the morning worship, and there you will get the final uh, uh, December re financial report uh, for the month, or uh, anything else that needs to come up. We can always discuss that. Uh, next Sunday, which will be February third, we will have our Valentine's banquet after the morning worship. Uh, hopefully, if you know what you can bring, you can bring it. I think the sound sheet's still back in the Sunday school class, the adult Sunday school class, but we'll get it out of here. And if you know what you're going to bring, if you write it down, that's fine. And some things have been written down already. Uh, but that's going to be next Sunday, so after the morning worship, you can uh, join us and have fellowship. Uh, no school here in St. Tammany Parish from uh, the 11th through the 15th, that's Monday through that Friday of Mardi Gras week, of course. Uh, as, a, as all the students will be out for the Mardi Gras week that week, and so uh, Mardi Gras is the 12th uh, this year, coming early. And then Valentine's Day itself is on the 14th, that Thursday, uh, two days after Mardi Gras, so keep that in mind. Uh, just for information purposes, whether you're going to them or whether you are going to try to avoid them, uh, there are two parades in Slide out today, back to back, uh, and they start at the normal starting place on Poncha Train, coming up Poncha Train, turning down uh, on Front Street, and turning up Front Street to Gauze, coming back. So there are going to be two parades uh, back to back uh, as far as So there's going to be a long parade. So uh, again, you have a lot of time whether you're going to go to them or whether you're going to avoid them even after church. So keep that in mind. Uh, the big reason for both of them is that next Sunday they're not going to have any anywhere uh, because of the Super Bowl next Sunday. I think that's the reason behind why there are two of them back to back today here in Slidell. Uh, so keep that in mind. And if my memory serves me correctly, uh, here in Slidell, I think either this Friday or Saturday is supposed to have another one uh, here, one of those two days. So be aware of that as well uh, coming up this coming week uh, here in Slidell on Front Street, the normal parade route from Park to Train down Front Street and Gauze. I think either Friday or Saturday, I forgot which of the two, uh, which of one, so keep that in mind so you may be aware of that. Um, also, the old Christmas tree that we that we had that we used to put up here without lights. If anybody wants and would like to have a Christmas tree, now this is a little bit more to put together because it comes in two boxes and it's like uh, seven foot five, it's a big tree and it's a full tree, but it's, it's in pretty good shape for an artificial tree. I do have it in the back, back there. Uh, so if anybody would like to have it, they can. If nobody contacts me today to get it, it's going to be going out. I mean, because it's just taking up space. Uh, so if, if you know anybody, or if anybody would like to have it, like, again, you can take a look at it. It's in two boxes in the back, back there. A big tree that we, that we used to put up. We Not the one that you saw this past Christmas, but the one before that. And again, it doesn't have lights in them, it's just a big artificial tree, but it's still in good shape. And so if you know somebody, or if you'd like to have it, I need to know this as soon as possible, um, just because of that. So we should have that. Also, uh, we don't have a place as of yet, but the Men's Fellowship next month will be the 21st of February. Uh, 
basically, I think the third Thursday in February next month. So the 21st, that's the week after Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is 14th, which is a Thursday, so we're going to do it the week after uh, that, which basically be the third Thursday of next month. So 21st of February, don't have a place yet, but we'll, we'll get you a place and let you know way ahead of time, but just to know you know the date. And that's at 6.30 that Thursday on the 21st, unless something else comes up. Since I, I haven't talked to really Al about it, so unless something else comes up, I'll let you know differently, but it's right now. And that sounds okay, so we'll get together on that. Any other announcements? Any, anything else? Uh, anything else we need to be aware of? If not, Mr. Alvin, please, another hill.
care of her. And, uh, she had the same procedure done on the left foot and it's heal healing up good. But, so she had to have again, uh, had this done on the right foot uh, this past week. So uh, just remember both of them in prayer. Plus Ms. Ida, all she goes through because she deals with diabetes and she also has dialysis three times a week as well. So uh, it's a compound thing with her. Uh, given the factor of what she goes through every week. Just going through dialysis is, uh, is sometimes a struggle just for us. So just remember them in prayer and of course what they're dealing with prayer. Thanks. Uh, it's good to have Miss Virginia here. And how are you doing? I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you all. Good, good. She came to our stress test, her angiogram in flying colors and everything, so that was a, that was a good thing. So uh, we, we, we thank the Lord for that. And, and Appreciate all, all of that. So we want to continue. Remember you in prayer, and, and all that goes on forward with all with all of that as well. Um, just remember many others as well in prayer on our prayer list. Uh, the Bryans they had some things come up this morning. I'd ask you to remember Danny, Renee, Melissa, and the family. Uh, there are some things that are taking place uh, with several different things, and I'd ask you to remember them in prayer and pray for them. They need our prayers. Uh, much going on and many things taking place and uh, it's uh, very difficult things that have taken place. So pray for them and remember them in prayer and they need our prayers. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us this morning. Debbie? I would just like y'all to remember Sadie in prayer. She's doing really good. She started college and I'm just so proud of her. She's just trying to better her life and I'm so proud of it. Oh, good. We want to pray for her for guidance and for leadership. I also remember your mom in prayer with the, yes. with the passing of your uh, her brother in law. Yes. Yeah, and, 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 the, and the family. Remember them in prayer and what they're dealing with. And also remember you in prayer with your two uh, and, and what you're dealing with with that. So pray, we'll pray for you as well and remember you in prayer. Sure will. Thank you. Others? Ginger. Continue prayer for my family, for my sisters, mm -hmm. my husband, myself, and my children. Okay. And also, um, remember Richard and Glenn in prayer. Yeah. Did pass. Okay. Three o'clock that morning. Okay. All right. All right. Remember that family and what and what did. Uh, I think this is Richard's mom. Yes. Yeah. Richard. yeah. So remember, remember that family and always a hard thing when you lose a loved one. Um, and so pray for them for sure. Others. Uh, remember, uh, remember Will in prayer? Will went to swim party and his little feet are hurt. He got blisters on the bottom of his feet and don't know if it's lots or maybe too much chlorine or bleach in the pool or whatever, but uh, his little feet are hurt. And, and so we need to pray for him as he's just uh, walking around very gingerly. <laughs> and then also, Hoyt is under the weather this, this morning as well. So remember Hoyt in prayer as he is under the weather. Remember both of them in prayer and what they're dealing with. On the prayer request, Ms. Nell. Oh, okay, all right, we sure will. Absolutely. Remember her mother also with the children in the arms. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. And also, Grandpa and the family. We always remember Mr. Billy. Always remember him, yes. We keep all the yard prayer, both of them. We should do. Others. Um, remember, Jason, it's going pretty well. We actually had about two and a half weeks left. Oh, good. Um, this coming week, if it were college, it would be exams. Right. Um, they have a different name for it, but okay. we need a little extra prayer this coming week. Okay. All right. His, his particular point, the group isn't coming together. It's like a bunch of individuals who are supposed to work together. Right.
Just remember each other in prayer. Pray for each other. Remember, the, pray for the many who are not here with us this morning for whatever reason. We do have, again, a few who are not here. We ask you to remember them in prayer and whatever may be going on or may, whatever may be taking place with them, pray for them. Uh, again, the many senior adults, whether at home or in a hospital, uh, wherever they may be, we lift them up in prayer. Ms. Hattie Carter, uh, continue to pray for her. She continues to have uh, different things that are going on and of course, it's very hard for her to, um, to where she herself, you know, she, she's forgetting that she doesn't have a leg, uh, doesn't have one leg, so she just hops up and tries to, and she falls most of the time. So pray for her, a different number of her prayer, which she's, which she's dealing with. This is a very hard time for her to struggle. So remember, Miss Hattie Carter, uh, as well as, again, many other senior adults, what they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. and the many things that have taken place. Um, as you have read in the paper probably, pray for this family who this 10 month old was run over by dad uh, unavoidably, did not know. And, uh, pray for that family, as well as that neighborhood. Um, uh, from what I understand, Debbie's daughter Sadie lives in or next door or next there. Yeah, and so it's just a hard time for all of them as far as what they're dealing with. And, right, but I actually pray for that family because it's extremely, extremely hard for them and, and it's just a sad time for them. So pray for them and remember that family in prayer and, and of course what they're dealing with. Uh, traveling mercies for all who are traveling, will be traveling, regardless if it's wherever it may be. But especially if you're traveling early morning when it, where we're dealing with this fog and especially those who travel over you know, from here to New Orleans, and you have to deal uh, deal with the uh, high rise, or you have to deal with different other places where it's foggy and it's hazardous. Sometimes pray for the many who are dealing with that on a daily basis. Traveling mercy is always, and I think sometimes even just traveling from here to Covington, it gets kind of depends uh, on what time you leave in the morning. That too is kind of hazardous. So pray, traveling mercy for the many who travel and are traveling. Continue remember the people uh, up north and further east who are dealing with the ice and the snow. We're not dealing with that. And Clarence is, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Clarence, Clarence, Clarence knows about all, the, all that cold stuff. Well, Clarence, Absolutely. It's, not, it's not pleasant either for them. But remember the many people that are dealing with the frigid cold weather up north and to the east of us and, and even to the west of us in Colorado and different other places like that. Uh, remember them in prayer and what they are dealing with. And again, you just thank the Lord that, hey, we're supposed to be in winter, believe it or not. <laughs> and, and we're going outside this evening and you, you, you're probably going to say, where's the coolness at? There is none yet. But it's coming. If you don't like this weather, wait a couple of days and it'll, it'll change. It always does. And basically, by the end of the week, uh, I think we're supposed to get back down in the 30s, one or two couple of days, so something like that. So who knows? So, um, but just thank the Lord for the weather and for what we're dealing with here. And, and as always, thank the Lord for his many, many blessings and for what he has and is doing in our lives. Always be faithful to the Lord in all things and everything. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you again this morning. We thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Lord, for giving unto us things needed in our lives. We lift up all the prayers and all the concerns, those that have been spoken and the unspoken. We pray for your will. We pray for your help, for your guidance, and your grace. Where there are physical problems and physical ailments, we pray for healing, for help, for grace, and for mercy. Where there are problems, where there are situations, where there are difficult things that have come up, either at home or at work, or even the things that we battle from day to day, we pray for your help, for your guidance, and for your leadership. We pray for all the men and women in the military and their families, Jason and his flight and the many there, and others as well throughout. We pray for them and we lift them up before you. We lift up Sandy Deal as she will be having surgery tomorrow we pray for her and what goes on with her as well as Milton be with her Lord and be with the doctors and the nurses as they attend to her as well we lift up Miss Ida Beasley who has had just had surgery on her foot we pray for healing we pray for help we pray Lord that you'll ease her pain and the suffering that she is going through at this very moment help her and be with her as well 
to many others, Lord, that are dealing with different physical problems and ailments. Be with them also and help them. All the senior adults and what they deal with. Miss Hattie in the nursing home and many others, either in their private home or wherever they may be, and even some here, we pray for help, for grace, and for mercy. When death has come, we pray for your grace and for your mercy upon each and every one. Be with the many families and friends who are grieving and who are hurting, and help them, Lord, during the difficult time. We lift up this family, Lord, of this 10-month-old that was inadvertently and sadly killed. We pray for the family and what they are dealing with, Lord, and we lift them up and ask for your help and your grace and your mercy. Be with Danny, Renee, and the Bryants and what they're dealing with, and we lift them up before you, and we pray for help, grace, and mercy as well. And Lord, we pray for the lost, for many who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We lift them up before you, and we pray for salvation. Be with us this morning. Again, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Let's continue then as our comes and leads us in our own glory hymn. Let's stand, turning to hymn number 405, Have Faith in God. <laughs>
chapter 3. During the time of the early church, when they first began after the giving of the Holy Spirit, many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles and many others as well throughout the early church. Now, understand that the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them. And by His power, and by the power of Almighty God through the power of the Holy Spirit, they performed many miraculous signs. Peter, in Acts chapter 2, as we saw last week, he stood up before he stood up before a crowd of thousands upon thousands. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he spoke to these people. And at that day, God added to that number, and 3,000 people were saved that day. Here in Acts chapter 3, we have Peter and John going to the temple. And being led by the Holy Spirit, they perform a miracle. So, understand as we read this and as we look at this, apply it even to today, Jesus still heals. He still reveals his power to the people even today. Jesus still uses ordinary people to perform miracles and bring glory to God, as we will see in these ten verses concerning what is happening here and what we see through the power of God and how God mightily works in the lives of people. And again, the same thing still applies today. God still is working, even in the midst of many things. So today, let us look at what happened and what took place here in Acts chapter 3. First of all, the very first verse, notice, two went to the temple to pray. One day, Peter and John, they were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, we don't know how long after Pentecost this took place. It just said it happened one day, but it happened, of course, after the Pentecost. So here, Peter and John, they're being led by the Holy Spirit to go to the temple. Peter and John did what? They took time out of their busy schedule to pray. So many times, you know, we get into a rush, and so many times, you know, we, we have so many things, and we have so many irons in the fire, and so many things on our schedule. And we think, I'm just too busy to stop. But here, Peter and John, they took a time out of their busy schedule to go pray, to communicate with the Lord, to worship God in His house. It tells us in Hebrews, do not forsake the assembly as some are in the habit of doing. And we have that today. People are so busy. People do so many other things and they find time for all kinds of stuff. But yet they don't take the time just for one hour to come into God's house and worship Him. Just one hour. Maybe an hour and 15 minutes. Who's counting? But people get so busy they think, I can't do this. But yet they make time for everything else. Here, the schedule, I'm sure, became hectic after the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them and they ministered to many, many people. But yet they took time out as we should. Sometimes, again, we get busy and we need to top, stop and just pray to the Lord. Take the time. Daniel said pray three times a day. Daniel, as busy as he was, took the time out. Three times a day he would pray. Jonah. You know when Jonah prayed? Jonah prayed inside the belly of a large fish. There he was, swirl, everything swirling around him and everything in his life. He thought his life was coming to an end. And he goes and prays inside of a belly of a large fish. And in Jesus, before his crucifixion, he is in the garden of Gethsemane praying, asking, beseeching God's will and asking for help. Prayer is very, very, very important. And it's an important time in our lives and every believer's lives as well. In other words, prayer is essential. It's even more essential than probably even the breathing of the air that we breathe. It's very important for us. Here we see Peter and John were men of prayer. Just because their schedule was busy, just because they had a lot going on, they didn't stop communicating with God. They didn't stop seeking God's will and God's guidance. 
There was a time where they basically shut everything else out and they had solely focused upon God and what God would want in their lives. Today, we're missing that. People are running frantically everywhere and they're wondering, why is my life so upside down? Well, is it because your prayer life is not where it should be? Is it because you, is it because we have not stopped and said, I need, to pray. I need to pray to God, I need to ask Him for help and for guidance, for leadership. Today, do you know God's people really take time out to pray? Do we? Or we do we do what we do when we drive up to a drive through window? Hurry up, give me what I want, I'm gonna get out of here. Do we take the time and pray and communicate with God? Are we in the shape that we're in in this, in this world due to the lack of prayer? I often wonder. You know, we talk about Christianity and the right of being a Christian, but are we in the shape we're in because we do not pray, because we do not ask the Lord to help, because we're not seeking the Lord's faith? Prayer makes miracles possible. Prayer. Praying to God. Prayer gives direction in our lives that we need on a daily basis. Lord, help me to do these things. Lord, what should I do in this case? Lord, what is happening here? What, what should I do? Who do we seek for direction, for guidance, if not the Lord? Do we do this? Prayer gives us the peace for our soul that comes only from God. <laughs> Prayer seeks God's will and understanding. Lord, help me as I am stressed out about this situation. Lord, help me as these things have come up in my life. Lord, do we seek the Lord? You know, Jesus told his disciples there when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he told them to pray. Why did he tell them to pray? You may say, oh, he just told them to pray because, no, he gave them a reason even. He tells them in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41, he says, Watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. I need to say any more. How many times have we given in to certain temptations because we did not pray? Because we did not seek the Lord? Because we were like the disciples? Rather than praying, they slept. Three times he told them to do this, they still slept. Had Peter prayed, he probably would not have gotten, given in to the temptation there in, there in the courtyard and denied Christ three times. But he did not pray, they slept instead. <clears throat> How many times have we given in to the temptations, either by choice or by, or by our own desire, due to lack of prayer? Because we have not. How many times have we been attacked and said, Lord, what's happening? And is it because we have not prayed? Two went to the temple to pray. Prayer is essential in the life of every believer, in every person. You know what I find most people pray? It's when things happen. It's when disaster happens or things take place. And I'm saying, why haven't you prayed before this? See, we pray not only during the bad time, but we need to continue praying even when the times are good. Even during the times where there is bad. Not when times are mean, not when times are hard. But pray continually and daily. And you know what happens? God continually and daily guides us and directs us in all things. Why wait until something happens to say, Lord, help me with this? Well, we could have been praying all along. Things were going good to Peter and John. The church was exploding. Members were coming out of the woodwork. Thousands upon thousands were being saved. What did they do? They go to the temple and pray. And they continue to pray. What they were doing? Seeking God's will, God's guidance, direction, God's help. What they ought to do. They didn't let this go to their head. They didn't think, well, we don't need to pray anymore. All these people are being saved. Hey, what's the sense of praying anymore? No, they continue to pray. They, communi they continue to communicate with God. See, when we lose that communication with God, 
is when we get into trouble. And then Satan comes along and says, see, you don't need the Lord. You're doing okay on your own. But then what happens is he's lying to you because you haven't been doing it on your own all along. God has been there with you that whole time helping you. And if anything, pray and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done and are doing. And continue to have fellowship with God. Do you know there was a problem back in the Old Testament? It was in the New Testament. People stopped communicating with God. Jews went to the temple to pray. And that song that I sing that sometimes. How long has it been since you prayed? How long has it been since you spoke with the Lord? How long? Secondly, in verse 2 and 3, one went to the temple to plead. One. Notice. As Peter and John are going to the temple, notice what happens. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg. And from those going into the temple courts, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Now this is awesome here, what's taking place. Peter and John are going to the temple. They're going to the court, going in to pray. And what do they do while they're going there? They meet a beggar who is over 40 years old. He's sitting there. He's crippled. And he's been crippled since birth. He has not, he has not walked, nor could he walk if he tried on his own. He was there. He was totally dependent upon others for everything. And every day they would put him there. Every day they would put him outside that temple gate. Now understand, this is just one of the many gates in the temple, but there were other gates as well, or other entrances into it. And this was just one of them. And here he was, he was, sent, he was there every day as they placed him there, begging for money. He was unable to work. He had no SSI. There was no social security back then. There was no, not even any government help for him. The government back then, almost like the government today, they could have cared less about this man, who he was, how he was, and what was taking place with him. You know, it's almost the same today. The government really doesn't care. All they care about is themselves. If you think about it and you look at it. But the people do get help from the government today where back then there was no help. So he asked Peter and John for money. There he was. He saw them and said, and he asked them for money, for help. The beggar had been living on the world's handouts all of his life. All of his life. He's a little over 40 years old. And all of his life he's been living on the world's handouts. Imagine. You know, today, there are many like this beggar. And they're living on the world's handouts. But you know something? These are not people who are crippled. These are not people who are poor. These are not people who are unable to work. And we say, well, who are they? These are people who are sinners, lost, without Jesus Christ. These are lost people, lost sinners, who are satisfied with what the world has to offer and yet has nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing. Think about it. They're satisfied with what the world is giving them. And yet they're not really happy or satisfied. And they're continually looking for things. But yet they're satisfied with the world's handouts. Think about it. And some of the people that are mentioned maybe in the Bible that you can be associated with. Judas was one of them. Judas, he was satisfied with what the world had to give him. He was always worried about his money. But yet he didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus. Oh sure, he was one of the disciples. But still, Jesus never lived in his heart in his life. Never had anything to do with it. He only wanted what he could get out of it. The Pharisees and the Sadducees in Jesus' day, the same thing. They had nothing to do with Jesus, but they were satisfied with what the world was going to give them and what they could get out of the world. Simon the sorcerer, that Peter later engaged after this year, he too was only interested in the handouts. Not a true relationship with Jesus Christ. The only one was to follow the Holy Spirit so he can make money. It's like we have so many other people and even religions that use 
for their own personal gain rather than giving glory to God. What we have here, these people, have nothing to do with it. One went to the temple to plead. Today, what are you pleading for? What is it that you need in your life to satisfy you? What are you seeking? Are you seeking just what the world has to offer? Or do you want what Jesus has to offer? He, what he has, will satisfy. Now understand, this man was not looking for that. He was looking for monetary help. He was looking for money. He was looking for things that would help him because he could not work. However, what we're going to see in a moment is that what's going to take place as he went to the temple to plead from people coming for help. We're going to see now the third thing is that one went into the temple to praise. Look at what happened after he pleaded and he begged John and Peter and John for money. Look at what took place in his life that changed his life completely and for the better. Peter looked straight at him. As, as the man says, can you give me help? Help me with some money. And Peter looked at him, and as did John, both of them, and then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention. Oh, he was expecting to get something from them. And Peter said to him, sir, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Ooh. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and he began to walk. Then he went into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple called gates called Beautiful. And they were all filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to this man. Can you imagine? By the power of Almighty God, here Peter and John as they're going in the temple, and they come and they encounter this beggar who is begging for stuff. They saw the beggar's real need. How? By the power of the Holy Spirit. They realized what this beggar really needs was not money, but healing. What this beggar really needed in his life was Jesus Christ to give him healing and give him help. This beggar, he expected money. He looked at him and Kelly and said, Boy, I'm going to get. The beggar looked with certainty as if that he was going to get something. And indeed, what he got from Peter and John changed his life forever. Forever. He also didn't get what he expected. He got even more than what he expected. He didn't get money. He didn't get all his millions of dollars like you hear so many other preachers on TV or other preachers who say, well, if you give your life to Lord, the Lord will do this, this, and this for you. This wasn't promised by him. No, the Peter and John says, still we go, I don't have what I give you. I give you in the name of Jesus. Walk. And here we see that what he got was healing for his soul and healing for his body as well. What he got, money could not you can't buy salvation. You can't even buy miracles from the Lord. Contrary to what you may hear on TV or other people's work, you can't buy a miracle from the Lord. Miracles from the Lord are grace. They come from the Lord because He loves and because He needs fit. This man who is 40 years old got the power of Jesus' healing in his legs and his ankles. This beggar became completely healed. Can you imagine? He was walking, it said. He was jumping. He was praising the Lord. For the very first time in his life, what happened? He did something he had never done since birth. Even before birth, he had never been. He couldn't even go into the temple. You know why he wasn't allowed in the temple? He wasn't allowed in the temple because of his, because of his crippledness. The Pharisees and the, and, the, and the priests and all said that he had done a terrible sin and that he was considered basically unclean because of the fact that he was crippled from birth. So they figured that it was some type of a sin that either he or his parents had done. So he wasn't even allowed to go into the temple courts because of his crippledness. 
But yeah, for the very first time, after over 40 years, we see him. He walks, he's jumping. And notice what does he do? He gave glory and honor to God. He didn't praise and glorify Peter and John. He gave glory to God. It said he walked in there. And as he was walking into the temple court, he was jumping and he was praising God. Oh, you should have seen the scene that was taking place. And the whole time, he's praising God. Why? Because now for the first time, he is able to walk. He is able to do what he had never done before. Everyone there in the temple, everyone, all the Jews, all the Israelites, they saw the awesome power of Jesus demonstrated in this beggar who could now walk. They were all amazed and said, wow, how did all of this happen to this man? We know this man. We saw him outside the gates. This is the same man who was begging. This is the same man who was crippled. This is the same man who couldn't walk. How could he walk? You see, this man, they put it in today's term, he's an illustration of what happens when a person is healed by Jesus Christ, both physically and spiritually. Forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ, forgiven of all of our sins, it is though the weight of everything has been lifted. And if for the first time in your life, when you, when, you, when you give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, and when Christ comes into your heart, for the first time you're able to jump up and down, you're able to, to say, praise the Lord, I've been burdened down with my sin all my life, and now Christ has forgiven me. Do you remember this yourselves when you first came to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you remember that burden that was with you? Do you remember how free you felt and how you survived? All of this time, you know what the Lord has done? I remember it. I was 19 years old. I thought I was saved before that, but I wasn't. I gave my heart, my life. Wow, this is good. You want to just praise the Lord. You'll never lose that feeling. No matter how long you've been a Christian, or how short of a time you've been a Christian, don't ever lose that feeling, and don't ever believe the devil and say it's not real. It is real, and it's forever. So here this man goes in there. Every day, understand that we as believers, every day people see the awesome power of Jesus in us. Every day. They see that we are walking miracles. Because Christ changed our hearts and our lives. Do you remember what it was like? Do you remember what Jesus did? Go back and think. Sometimes we have to go back to the basics and say, wow. I remember, it's been a long time back, but I remember what happened. I remember how much joy I had, how I felt at ease, and how all that was lifted. We are walking witnesses everywhere we go, everywhere. We demonstrate the power of Jesus Christ to people. Now, unfortunately, sometimes we fail. Sometimes we don't do what we're supposed to do. So we become a negative witness. And sometimes we don't. But don't let that discourage you. Don't let that stop you from witnessing about Jesus Christ or Christ coming or, or you telling other people about Jesus Christ. See, this is the marvelous thing as well. It reveals to people and shows them, I'm saved by grace, not of works. If I was saved by works, I would, have, I would, I would never be saved. Again, what comes to mind is Ephesians chapter 2, where it says we're saved by grace, not of works, as any man should boast. It reveals, I'm saved by grace. Yeah, I'm not perfect. Yeah, I still do things I'm not supposed to do. But the Lord's working on that on me. He's chipping away every single day. And he's helping me to overcome it by his power. We are the miracles that we can display to other people. Are you a miracle that people can see? Are you a sinner? Truly saved by the grace of Jesus Christ and his blood. You can be. And like this beggar, people were amazed at what they saw in him. They were amazed and he gave glory and honor to the Lord. And if you notice, also in verse 19, as Peter told the people in the temple, he told them, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that the time to refreshing may come from the Lord. You see, this is what needs to happen. Repenting of sin, not sweeping it under the rug, 
Not saying it's okay, but repenting of it and giving it to the Lord and knowing that he died on the cross for our sins. And then even later in chapter 4, when Peter and John stood before the tent, even, oh, they demanded. They wanted to know, how is it that this man was healed? How is it that this crippled man was able to walk? How all this happened? And here, Peter relates to the people of the Sanhedrin. And they didn't believe him, trust me. They didn't, they didn't believe him at all. But here in chapter 4, in verse 10 and following, he says, By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, with God raised from the dead, that this man now stands before you healed. He is the stone that is Christ. You builders rejected, which has been the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Now you may ask, ah, look at what happened. And Jesus did this in the power of this healing man to someone who was over 40 years old. It's never too late to come to know Jesus Christ. It is never too late to know the healing power of Christ. So you say, well, how do you know he was 40 years old? Well, in chapter 4, and verse 22, he says, But this man was miraculously healed, who was over 40 years old. See, this is what happens when you read God's Word. You see amazing things that God does in the lives of people. And it's never too late to come to the Lord. It's never too late to experience the power of Jesus Christ. Because of how young you may be, or how old you are. Know that if Jesus is speaking to you today, you can come. He says, come unto me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, believe in me, and I will forgive you all of your sins. Believe that what I have done at the cross was for you, and that all everything can be wiped away, slate clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. He says, just come. Come unto me. You can have eternal life. Do you know Jesus Christ today? Let us stand. Almighty God, we come to you, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you revealed. There's anyone here this morning that does not know you anymore, you are speaking to them and telling them, Come. I pray that by your grace and free glory, they will come unto you this morning for salvation, for forgiveness of sins, for refreshing and renewing of life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Turn to hymn number 286. I saw the cross of Jesus. As we sing all four stanzas in our closing hymn, that God is leading you through Christ Jesus to come, you come as we sing hymn number 286.
the death for any and all who are truly born again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and sanctified by his blood, and you believe in him truly as Lord and Savior, you can participate with us. This is not a means of salvation, but it's a time where we come together to remember what Jesus Christ has done for us, the greatest gift that God has given to us, and that is to remember the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior.
after partaking the bread, he also took the cup and he said, this is the cup in my covenant, which is in, which is in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we do. Do let us pray. Almighty God, again we come before you. We thank you again, great Jehovah God, for sending your Son to die for our sins. And the promise became a reality in our hearts and our lives. God so loved that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And our life is found in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for what you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us as well. And Lord, I pray that we can be living examples for you, that wherever we go, we may tell others of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to live life pleasing for you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Again, just be aware of all that's going on, all that's taking place again uh, in and around the area, the parades that's taking place and everything else. There is a, a list here. Now we do have a few, few people that have signs, so we may have a little bit of food here. So we, we're, we're doing okay. Uh, but there is a list here, so if you know what you're going to bring would like to put it down, that's fine. That way people ask me, I can always tell them which part I'm going to bring it to that. That's next Sunday, so keep that in mind uh, as always with that. Uh, even if you don't bring anything, that's fine because we usually have a whole lot of food and you're more than welcome to come, so don't feel uh, like it, you're obligated or whatever, but if you want to come, just go ahead just go ahead and come. We, we always have a lot of food, so keep that in mind for next Sunday as we gather together uh, for that. This coming Wednesday, 7 o'clock, back in the kitchen, we have prayer meeting and Bible study back in the back hall. We would like to come for that. Again, be reminded of all that is going on all that's taking place. Um, after the closing prayer, about five or ten minutes, we'll have a time of business today. For those of you who can stay or would like to stay, please do so, but I understand you can. And if you'd like to have a copy of the financial report, feel free to do so. We'll have them at the back as well. I pray God's blessing upon each and every one. Let's all stand. Al, lead us in closing prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you thanking you for all that you've done for us. I, Father, thank you for each one that is here. And I pray, Father, that again, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, that they're saved, that their heart was really touched today. But Father, I pray that they don't, that Lord, that they'll grow, that they'll grow. Thank you for the brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for your word. Be with us, Father, as we go our separate ways. Bring us back to worship again together in our son's prayer. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at, at the church at 985-214-93. And feel free to call, but if you're out of town or if you don't live near here, seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.